per the recording of today's video, the race between the San Francisco Giants and Los Angeles Dodgers in the West and the AL East dogfight for wildcard spots are all within two games or less. There isn't much baseball left to play in the regular season with September winding down, and because of this, we as baseball fans may be given a very special extra event, the fabled Game 163. Baseball fans know that there are only 162 games in the schedule, but sometimes a tiebreaker game is necessitated. Game 163s don't happen very often because it's very hard to tie for a record with an 162 game season with so many variables. You'd think that this would basically never happen because the two teams would need to finish with identical records, but since the turn of the century, we've seen a decent amount of these tiebreaker games. With the introduction of the one game wildcard game in the past decade, the one game playoff has been normalized a bit more, but there's just something a bit different about a game 163, with one team getting sent home with no prizes, no more opportunities, and no recognition for making the playoffs. Just a winning record. These Game 163s can redefine the history of franchises as well, with the winners often going on deep playoff runs after the fact. And in modern baseball history, there's been a plethora of exciting tiebreaker games that have gone on to define the ensuing postseason. Let's turn the clock back to 1999 to see an example of this. There's a lot of history of Game 163 before the 1999 tiebreaker, but I decided to start with this one because it's a great story and it involves my favorite team, the New York Mets. The Mets entered September 20th of that year with a record of 92-58, and only to lose their next 8 of 9 games, allowing the Cincinnati Reds to pass them in a wildcard standings with a two-game lead. The Mets would win each of their last three games to finish 96 and 66 and force Game 163 against the Reds for the wildcard spot. The Reds would get home field advantage, but the Mets got big home runs from Ricky Henderson and Edgardo Alfonso off Red starter Steve Parrish. And then Al Leiter carried them the rest of the way with a masterful two hit complete game shutout. The Mets would win this game 5 to nothing and steady the momentum to make Game 6 of the NLCS after a dramatic NLDS victory against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Unfortunately, they'd fall in the championship series against their division rival in the Atlanta Braves, who would eventually fall to the New York Yankees in the World Series. This 1999 tiebreaker was exciting, but MLB would be deprived of another Game 163 for eight more years after this Mets-Red showdown. But the wait was very much worthwhile. Fast forward to 2007 and we got maybe the best tiebreaker game in MLB history. The Colorado Rockies hung in the balance of playoff contention in the middle of September with a 76 and 72 record, four and a half games back of the Padres who controlled the wild card. The Rockies would then go on an extremely improbable 14 and one run to end the season tied with the Padres at 89 and 73, forcing a game 163. The Rockies got home field advantage after winning the season series from the Padres, and they kickstarted things early with a 3-0 lead after two innings off Cy Young winner Jake Peavy. Yorvit Torrealba had the big hit of the game with a solo bomb, but the Padres responded promptly with a monster five-run third inning punctuated by this Adrian Gonzalez grand slam that silenced the Colorado faithful. By the end of the sixth inning, Colorado would regain a one-run lead, only for Brian Fuentes to blow the save and allow a game-tying Brian Giles double in the eighth inning. This game would go way deep into extra innings, where in the 13th, Scott Hairston played hero for the San Diego Padres by crushing a two-run bomb for an 8-6 lead. But most people don't remember this hit because of what happened right after. The Rockies would face off against Trevor Hoffman in the bottom half of the inning, who was an NL All-Star with 42 saves and a 2.98 ERA. Shockingly, he'd allow three consecutive extra base hits to enable a tie game in a flash. And then, Jamie Carroll would play hero with a line drive sack fly that would score Matt Holliday, even though he never touched home home plate, and thus concluded what was inarguably the craziest tiebreaker game in MLB history. With a head full of steam from the most miraculous win in their franchise's history, the Rockies rode the momentum train all the way to their first and only National League pennant. If you want a full breakdown on what would go on to be called Rocktober, I highly suggest you check out Sportstorm's video on it. But after this epic matchup between the Rockies and Padres, Game 163s were about to become a whole lot more frequent. But now they'd be more exciting because they're not only just for wildcard spots, they're for division titles as well. The very next year in 2008, the Chicago White Sox and the Minnesota Twins were tangled up in a tight race for the AL Central crown down the stretch. The White Sox led for most of the season, starting it with a tie for first on May 17th of that year, and they'd hold at least a share of first place for 154 consecutive days. But after the Twins swept the White Sox in late September, Chicago sat behind a half game with four to play. They'd win two of those four games to improve to 88 and 70. 
74, and that would be enough to force a tie in the Central and another dramatic Game 163. With the Red Sox locking up the wild card in the East, it was win or go home for these two teams. Because Chicago won home field advantage, this game would go on to be known as the Blackout Game, with the Sox encouraging their fans to wear all black to the stadium. Taking the bump for the South side was John Danks, coming off what would be his best season in the big leagues. He faced off against fellow sophomore pitcher Nick Blackburn, and the two went back and forth relentlessly with scoreless frames for either side. But it was Jim Tomey who finally found a crack first with a solo bomb in the seventh inning, and that would be all Chicago needed. John Danks finished eight innings of masterful work for just the second time in his career, and then passed the save off to Bobby Jenks, who shut the door and won the Central for the White Sox. They'd unfortunately stall out in the American League Division Series against the Tampa Bay Rays, but Dank's performance continued a dominant track record of starting pitching in the playoffs for the White Sox, which I covered in my most recent video. While the Minnesota Twins went home empty-handed, they'd remain competitive and return a year later with a shot at redemption. Let's take a quick pause from the history of tiebreaker games to hear from today's sponsor. With the final week of the regular season upon us, here's your chance to collect the players and moments that made this season so unforgettable with the Topps Bunt MLB Card Trader app. Topps Bunt is the official trading card app of the MLB and MLBPA and releases new content every day featuring your favorite players, both past and present, as well as iconic moments like teams punching their tickets to the postseason and more. The app is free to play and collectors from around the world come together to connect, collect, and play their collections in real time, scoring contests to win in-app prizes. Build the ultimate digital baseball collection, craft or trade in lesser valued cards for more rare ones, play the card wheel to win a prize with every spin, and complete missions to unlock new content. Topps Bunt 21 will also be the premier destination for all the playoff action, releasing new collectible content with every twist and turn of the 2021 postseason. If any of this sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend that you download the Topps Bunt app now in the iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store. Okay, let's get back into the video. Now in 2009, they saw themselves seven games back of the division-leading Detroit Tigers on September 6th, and a week later, Minnesota embarked on an impressive run, winning 11 of 12 games. Following this win streak, the Tigers and Twins played a four-game set but ultimately split, and the Twins would win out the rest of their games to finish 86-76, and just enough for another tie in the AL Central. This marked the only time in MLB history that a division would be decided by a tiebreaker in two consecutive seasons. The game was scoreless through two innings until a Miguel Cabrera two-run bomb capped off a three-run third for the Tigers off Scott Baker of the Minnesota Twins. The Twins would scratch enough runs across for a 4-3 lead in the seventh, only for Maglio or Don to deposit a game-tying solo home run in the eighth, forcing extra innings at the Metrodome. Joe Nathan and Fernando Rodney both had scoreless innings until the 10th, where both teams put up a run. The Twins had a chance to win with Alexi Casilla tagging up on a fly ball to Ryan Rayburn, but he was promptly gunned down to force another inning. But the Twins would finally break through in the 12th, with said Alexi Casilla making up for his base running blunder by knocking in Carlos Gomez for the game winning run. A year after a heartbreaking loss in Game 163, the Twins got sweet revenge and clinched the division for the fifth time that decade. But of course, they'd be swept out of the playoffs by none other than the New York Yankees because some things never change. After this heartwarming story for the Minnesota faithful, the next tiebreaker game would be the third in a row for the American League, taking place four years later in 2013. The Tampa Bay Rays sat with a half-game lead up in the newly restructured wildcard race, which now allowed two teams to make the postseason. Behind them were the Texas Rangers and Cleveland Indians within a game apiece. The Rays would win eight of their last 10 games to secure a 91-win season, but on the flip side, the Cleveland Indians somehow won up them, finishing their season with a 10-game win streak to hop into the top wildcard spot and game home field advantage. This left the Rays and the Rangers tied, forced into a tiebreaker game to get into a one-game playoff to get into the division series. Yeesh. The matchup itself would be mostly unremarkable with the Rays taking a first inning lead and never stepping off the gas. The real story here was David Price, who came up in the clutch by throwing a two-run complete game to finish a 5-2 win for the Rays. The Rays would keep it up and cool off the Red Hot Indians, with Alex Cobb shutting them out over six and two-thirds innings in a 4-0 win. They'd eventually fall to the World Series winner of that year and division rival, the Boston Red Sox, who won the ALDS three games to one. 
The tiebreaker game would go through another long hiatus of five years, and 2018 was the last instance of a tiebreaker we've seen. But it also marks the only year in MLB history where two separate tiebreaking games were necessary. By the end of the 2018 season, four spots were open in the National League for four playoff teams, but no one knew who was going where. The Brewers and Cubs were tied for the NL Central, while the Rockies and Dodgers were tied for the NL West. So each of these teams needed a tiebreaker game between them, and the winners of the tiebreakers would head to the National League Division Series while the losers would be pitted against each other in a one-game wildcard playoff. The Brewers headed to Wrigley Field after winning their final eight games of the season and going 19-7 in September to force a divisional tie. Julius Chassin tossed a quality start, and after the crew took a 3-1 lead in the eighth inning after a pair of RBI singles, Josh Hader tossed two scoreless innings to shut the door on the Cubs and send them to the do-or-die playoff game. After the high of this win, the Brewers would go all the way to Game 7 of the National League Championship Series, but their opponent in that series was the Los Angeles Dodgers, who dominated the Rockies in Game 163 after Walker Buehler tossed six and two-thirds scoreless innings to win their sixth straight division title. There were homers from Cody Bellinger and Max Muncy that staked a 5-0 LA lead, which ended in a 5-2 decisive victory. The Rockies would end up prevailing over the Cubs in a wildcard game upset only to be swept out of the NLDS by Milwaukee, so everything connected in the end. And that, as of right now, is the modern history of Game 163. We haven't seen one in a couple years now, but with many teams in the heat of playoff contention with few games left to play, we could be seeing perhaps the most exciting tie-breaking games yet this year. But for now, all we can do is wait patiently, appreciate the history of these intense matchups, and hope that a couple clubs end in a tie somehow, someway. But that'll do it for this video. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.